All right, guys, on these Honda valve bodies, I take all the valves out, uh, do the bores with the uh, bench buddies, and the valve has to fall in under its own weight and come out into my hand under its own weight. So this is the uh, clutch pressure control solenoid valve. I have the spring out, I have the end plug out, and let's see how this drops in under its own weight. See, it dropped right in and came right out. That's what's got to happen with each of the valves in this valve body. Now, I'm just going to put this back in. This is, I got the spring in there now because this valve we know was good. And I use these Sonics uh, end, end plugs. It has the O-ring. reason for that, let me just put this plug in, you got the spring over here and the valve here and the end plug of course is here. As the oil comes in, if this end plug is loose, you're going to lose the oil through the end plug. So with the O-ring on there, you're not going to lose the oil. And with these particular valves, if they do not stroke correctly or work correctly, the transmission is never going to work right. So a lot of guys uh, maybe use their line cutter and put a groove around it, or a lot of guys use the end plug kit. I like the end plug kit because just in case you have to take the plug out again, it'll come right out. Uh, versus the other one, if you, if you uh, make a groove in it, um, it'll be a little probably be a little tougher to come out. So I just want to show you guys what I do with the uh, valve bodies on this uh, B7XA. All right guys, this is that B7XA uh, that's all cleaned up now. This is the trans cleaned. And I'm gonna get ready to where we build this. The valve body's done. And I just wanted to uh, touch on a couple of things. I had mentioned with, uh, with this uh, slider that this step goes up and inside the slider is going to be this hub and this hub has a recess here and it's completely flat here well this as I said this step faces up and this uh, hub with this step faces up so it goes in like that and fourth gear is down here and reverses up here so this goes like that all right and uh, as far as the pump goes I said that anything above pretty much two uh, point like zero zero two five and some people even make the limit less they don't like it past like point zero zero two um, then the pump is too worn out it's going to have to be changed so I have my feel -a gauge and this is really really paper thin and this says 0 0.0015 or 0 0.04 millimeters and here's my straight edge and I put it across and it has a little it's a little drag on it but it still fit through so now I want to get my next size which is going to be a 0 0.002 put the straight edge on it and this actually won't won't come out it has a lot of drag on it I can't even put push it in so this probably has between a 0015002 um, clearance so to me this is passable so I'm going to be using uh, this pump and valve body on the rebuild and that's uh, really about it just wanted to touch on those uh, couple of items. What I do also, just to let you guys know, I, I do all the valve body, ten, these bolts here, to about 100 uh, inch pounds. And when I tighten this, there's three 12 millimeter that go around the pump. 
and I do those to about 130 inch pounds. And then of course I make sure the pump turns. Uh, and I guess that's about it guys, so I'm going to be uh, working on this uh, Monday. And, oh, one more item that I want to show you guys. Actually, I'll get the new ones because I got my parts already. These are the balance pistons and they're two different sizes. We put them next to each other, this one is much taller than this one. This one goes in second gear and this one goes in first gear. And what I do on, as far as the steels go, the second steels, I always get new ones because it makes the clearance come up perfect. The steels actually can be worn out as well. Um, and like I said, with the first, third, and fourth, it has a lip here. So I always change the bottom steel I might get up. And I always get at least one bottom steel as long as the other ones are in good shape. Uh, and then just inspect your fourth gear here for wear, inspect your reverse gear here for wear, and all your bearing surfaces for pits, inspect your flat bearings and round bearings, uh, barrel bearings for uh, any pits or anything like that. And uh, I guess that's about it. So once again, I uh, thank you guys for watching and have a great day.